For the first part of this demonstration, what you're going to need is your drawing. So we're going to actually draw the image of Martin Luther King onto our canvas first before we actually paint it. So what I'm going to need is you're going to need your, uh, your chipboard or um, a piece of tag board, poster board, um, canvas, pretty much uh, whatever surface that you're going to be using to transfer your image on. That's the first thing that we're going to be working with. So um, I have a piece of white cardboard here to kind of sit my um, my little piece of tag board on. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually start layering on my carbon paper and then my template. So when you're using your carbon paper, what you want to do is you want to take your carbon paper, the dark side, the darkest side needs to be face down and the gray side needs to be face up. And then what I'm going to do after that is I'm going to take my image and I'm going to place it on top of my actual um, thing. So what you want is that your paper that you are tracing to be on top of your carbon paper and this is so that when you trace the image, it transfers to your canvas, whichever type of canvas that you want to do this on. Uh, this one is actually on um, poster board. So, like I said, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to line it back up, and then I'm going to put it back together. So what I also want to do is I want to have my image a little higher up than my uh, transfer paper because I'm going to tape it down. So I'm just going to take a little piece of tape here and you can either use um, you can either use some painter's tape or uh, masking tape. You can use regular tape, but I think that it works a little bit better using the uh, painter's or masking tape. And what I'm doing is I'm just putting down my pieces of tape and this is to not only hold my um, my surface in place, but to also hold my image in place that I'm tracing. Because throughout it, you can actually lift it up. And what happens is when you put the image back down, it goes in the exact same place. And that's what you want because you don't want to lift it up and then try to align the lines back up again. It ends up getting messy. All right. So... Also, what you want to do is you want to take a pen that is not black because it's a much harder to see black when you're tracing the lines that are already black. So I'm going to use a blue pen. Um, a blue or a red pen is, is what I would say preferably to use, but you can probably use any color pen. And if a black pen is the only thing you have, then just use the black pen. So what I... Um, like to do is I like to pick a starting point and then trace from there going all the way around the outsides and then working my way in. So I'm going to start right here by this ear and I'm going to trace the hair first and if the trace lines aren't exactly on the line it's absolutely fine. Once you start painting it you can kind of fix things as you go. So I'm starting like I said so I started with the one ear on the left and then I'm working my way to the right. And I'm just going to do the top part of a shirt. And I know that the 8x10 print ends up being a little bit shorter. So if I would just take it down to the sides just to make it look a little bit better. All right, and then I'm going to go back to this side. And then work my way back. My pen skipping a little bit. I'm going to go back and trace it again just so that I know that I traced it already. I want to be able to see some of that blue. All right. All right. So that's the outside of it. And if you lift the image and the carbon paper up, you'll be able to see it. That the outline that we just did is now on our tag board. 
All right. So after you do that, then you want to start picking like a certain location on where you want to um, trace next. And I would say either start at the bottom or the top first. Uh, this is so that you can kind of figure out what places you've already traced and what places you didn't. Um, for today, I'm actually going to trace what's on the inside of the bottom portion first. And that's because it's they have a lot less lines. They're a lot easier to see. So I'm going to start with the less complicated and then work my way up. So I'm going to also try to do the same thing that I did before with starting with the lines that are kind of on the outside. But this time what I'm going to do is I'm going to do all my lines on one side and then work my way to the other side. So starting with my left side, I'm doing all the lines inside of like his dress jacket and his shirt and tie. All right. So this way it's a little harder for me to forget to do a line. Because this way I'm working from left to right. Almost like I'm reading a book. And there's a couple of lines at the top that I'm going to go back and kind of fix in. And like I said, this is just so that I don't make as many mistakes as I possibly can. Because when you're doing things like this, it's very easy to miss a line. Like I believe I did that one. And then, of course, if you're not sure you you did a line, just go back and do that line all over again. Because it's much easier to do a line twice than to have the second guess on whether or not you did trace a line. So just go right back over that line again. It's okay if the line's a little darker. So um, if you haven't noticed by now, also, uh, the harder you press down with your pen, um, the darker the image is going to trace onto your tag board as well. All right, so it looks like we got all the, uh, the lines on the inside of his jacket. And now I'm going to start with the face. And when I do the face, what I'm going to do first is I'm going to do the darker areas first, and then I'll go and then do the lighter ones. So like the the spots like with the eyes and things like this. Um, and what I like to do is where it's solid black, I kind of just trace in or scribble in the solid black as well. Because these are my darkest areas and I want to make sure that when I paint it that these areas remain the darkest areas. So I'm going to go ahead and, and kind of scribble these dark areas in. Because like I said, I want these darker areas to remain my darkest areas. And what I'm going to do is once I start painting over it, I am literally just going to paint right over these dark areas with the dark area, with the uh, darkest blue that I have. Alright, so I'm basically making these lines a little bit thicker than all of my other lines. And that's why I'm kind of scribbling these in. So, once again, here are the little areas in the ear that I'm also going to scribble in as well. All right, and then after that, I'm going to go back and kind of just make my other line. So the first thing that I want to do is I want to finish off the face. So I don't forget the face. I'm going to go with those major lines that I want to make sure are definitely in my image. So I'm going to start with the face. So now that I've scribbled in all of my dark lines, I'm now going back and doing what I would consider to be my major lines. So now that I've traced the whole face, I am going to start filling in the little blobs 
I guess you want to call them, or the nice little organic shapes inside of here, which is kind of like the lighting of the direction that the light is coming from. And I'm going to start with my bottom and then work my way up. So I'm going to get these little lines right here inside the mouth. So I started with my nice little organic shape with the chin, and now I'm doing these other little organic shapes around his mouth. And this shape right here is actually going to be, or would be, where his mustache is. So I want to make sure I get that in. Okay, and then I know we scribbled in the nose, but I want to make sure that we have the whole entire nose and that entire shape. So I'm going to go over that nose shape once again. And then I'm going to fill in the next shape that's right beside, right beside the nose. Okay, so we have that shape there, and now I'm going to get the other side. Because once again, like I said before, we kind of want to make sure that we're moving from a left to right or a right to left. This time I kind of went right to left versus left to right. And that was just because when I finished with the nose, I was already on the right side. So I just finished up the right. So now we have all of this section here completed. And I'm going to go ahead and start with the eyes. And I'm doing the eyes in a bunch of smaller sections. So I am tracing every little circle or line with the eyes because those are going to be different colors inside of once we start painting it inside of the painting because you want all those little shapes there. That's what gives it a nice realistic feel. Um, it's always the eyes. If the eyes feel real, then it always gives our painting a nice, clean, and realistic feel, even though we're going to be doing it in a monochromatic style. Okay, so we have that shape traced. I'm going to go ahead and do this one here. All right, and these little organic shapes right in here are actually going to be the eyebrows. And if you would like to make the eyebrows like really dark, you can also shade them in or you can kind of make lines in them to kind of help you remember that those are the eyebrows. You don't have to. You could just leave them in the shapes and just kind of remember it later. All right, so I believe now we have all of our shapes traced. Oh, actually, I think I missed a little spot in the ear. Um, and before untaping this, I want to make sure and look here that everything looks about right. Um, I'm going to make this eye a little more profound so that I can actually tell later on that this is my eye. And that's just a little dark shape up in there. Okay, so once we paint that, that eye will start looking much better. So, now that we have this portion of it done, we are actually finished with the tracing. And I am just going to carefully lift the tape up, because I don't want to rip that. And then I can remove the carbon paper and the image. In the traced image and then um, what I'm going to do is if you can carefully remove the tape you can actually use that to kind of tape down your um, your image before painting it uh, let's see so I'm going to kind of put it in in these two corners if your tape rips it's okay you can just replace it with another piece of tape um, 
but you can also use binder clips. So if it's close enough to the edge, you can actually just clip it. And it'll hold it down as well. I love binder clips. Binder clips, they work for just about anything. But um, like I said, you want to either have large enough binder clips so that it reaches all the way over to your image, or you want to be able to move your image a little closer to the edge or have a smaller uh, thing to clip it to. If you have a canvas board, then it's going to be fine. It's not going to move on you. This is just so that it keeps your image from curling while you're painting it. And I'm actually going to add another little piece of tape to uh, this bottom corner just to make sure that it's not curling. And this is just a little piece of painter's tape. And I'm just going to grab those little corners because I want to be able to later on fill in these little spots with paint. All right, so now that we are ready to get the painting portion ready, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a paper plate, a paper towel to dry off your paint brushes, of course, um, a cup of water to clean out your paint brushes, and I am going to use a palette knife so that I can mix my paint and I'm using a three-fourths brush you can also use a half inch or a one inch this is mainly just to do the background uh, to speed things up but you actually don't need the size of a brush other than to paint the background so if you don't have that size brush it's fine um, this one's a number 10 and it's flat and it's a little bit bigger uh, than the other brushes that I'm going to use. Um, the other brush that I'm going to use is a number two flat and then a number two round. And this is so that we can get all those little nooks and crannies. And then of course we're only going to be using two different colors of paint. So I have, um, this is Apple Barrel. I got this right from Walmart. It's a crafter paint. It's about $2.50 for the eight fluid ounce, but for this project, you don't need this large of a paint, so you can probably get the 2 or the 4 ounce, which is about 50 cent, if you're getting it in the matte acrylics at Walmart. I think the gloss is probably like 97 cents, so less than a dollar. Um, and then I'm also going to use the Apple Barrel White Acrylic, and um, I got a little bit bigger one of this one, and that's mainly because I use tons of white. Um, but basically, that's all you're going to need, your paintbrushes and two different colors of paint. Now, if you don't want to use blue, you can uh, feel free to use a different shade of paint other than blue. Uh, basically, the same rules are going to apply regardless of what color you choose. Um, today, we're just decided to choose blue. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put um, about a dime or a nickel size of blue paint starting off on my uh, my palette here which is just a paper plate and this is mainly just so that I can fill in the background and uh, the reason why I also had told you guys to uh, kind of scribble in those darkest areas is because we're also going to paint those areas with our blue as well and this is just the blue straight from out of the tube. We're not mixing it or anything yet. We're just going to be applying the blue. So I'm going to take my largest brush. And like I said, I'm just going to be doing the background. Now, if you don't have a lot of control um, with your large brush, and this is also the reason why I've pinned it down, so we can kind of just take the, the paint right off the edge. But if you don't have a lot of control with your large brush, what you could do is you can take um, your number two brush or uh, or your number uh, 10, and you can go around the edges first. And I would probably use the round, the flat. I mean, you can use either or, but just use like a smaller brush to go around the edges first. So that way you can kind of just go back and fill in the uh, larger areas with your larger brush. And once again, I'm just going around the face. 
with this small brush first. And around his jacket. And later on, of course, once I finish doing this, I'm going to go back with my big brush. And I'm going to, um, to paint the rest of the areas. I'm using the smaller brush to go around the face and the body so that I have a little more control over where my paint is going. Um, since I have this brush in my hand, I'm actually also going to fill in those darker spots. All right, so I'm going to paint in the dark area of the eyes, of the nose, the mouth, and the ears. And then I'm also going to paint like this outline here of his lips. And if you're unsure or if you decided you didn't want to scribble in the thicker lines, you can always just refer back to your template. So, and when I say that, I just mean, you know, just kind of, you can kind of like just leave your template here so that it's kind of in your vision plane. And remember what spots you did that were darker. And this is acrylic paint. As you can see, I'm resting my arm right on top of the first part, the, the first spot that I painted in because acrylic dries rather quickly. That's the best part about using the acrylics. Now, of course, if you put a lot of paint on there, then it's not going to dry as fast, but you don't necessarily need a ton of paint on your canvas. Okay, so I have my darker spots. Now, if you want, you can also add in darker spots to the jacket. Um, preferably, I like to kind of start mixing them first before I start adding darker spots. But just for the purpose of this tutorial, I'm just going to show you that you can also pick other spots inside of his jacket to start adding in darker spots as well. Um, also, you don't have to pick this shade of blue to be your backdrop. You can also maybe get the lightest shade of blue or wait until like another spot in, um, in painting before you add the blue. But I am gonna add some dark spots in here of blue so it kind of looks like folds or where the the light isn't hitting the jacket and um, I'm just gonna actually add I'm gonna add one more spot here I'm not gonna add too much with the darker blue because um, we want to show some progress with all of the different shades as we go along now let's see now because acrylics dry fast um, once you're done with the brush and if you're not going to be using it rather quickly you can go ahead and kind of dip it in some water or um, or clean it out just so that your brush isn't getting hard or um, or the acrylics aren't kind of like just filling up inside of your brush but for the most part for the larger brush this is the only spot or the only time I'm actually going to be using the larger brush so once I'm finished with the larger brush I'm actually just going to clean it out and put it away my small, my smaller brush the number two brush I'm going to be using that throughout the entire thing Mm 
Okay, now you can leave it with just the one coat if you like. Um, I'm actually going to do another coat just to try to even out the paint. And give it a little more of a cleaner look. Now if you're doing this on a canvas, I would say probably give it like two or three coats. But um, because we're doing this one on a piece of poster board, uh, it's not as sturdy as a canvas. So I'm just going to do those two coats. Okay, and then I'm going to drop that large brush into some water so that I can clean it out later. All right, so now um, on to adding in our white paint. So once I get my white paint, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use about the same amount each time when I go to add in my white because I want it to be kind of even. So I have a kind of big white thing here. And um, because my white is so big, I'm actually just going to scoop it out with my palette knife. All right, and then I'm just going to drop that. I'm going to take half of this just in case I want to use the blue later on to kind of fill some stuff in. I don't want to use the whole amount. And I'm just going to take that palette knife and... Mix it up a little bit. Mix my white in with that blue, and that'll give me a little bit of a lighter blue. And that's my next shade of blue that I'm going to actually use. All right, so once that's all mixed in, I'm going to kind of scoop, as you can see and just try to get all of it kind of mixed in there. And what I do when I'm mixing the white is I, I'm scooping it from the bottom just to try to make sure that all of my paint is mixed up properly. All right, and then I'm gonna wipe off my palette knife and sit it on the side. All right, and then I'm gonna get my uh, I'm actually going to use my number two pencil again. I mean, my number two paintbrush once again. And I'm going to start adding in my different areas of where I want to add the blue. So now that I've done my darkest spots of blue, I'm going to do my next areas and um, you can technically pick different areas um, the areas that I'm going to pick to me just makes more sense so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the hair the eyebrows um, right underneath the neck and then different spots on the jacket so let's see like I said I'm just taking my number two paintbrush because the areas are not that big, so I don't need a larger brush. All right, so now that I've gotten those painted in there, I'm now going to go ahead and move on to right underneath his neck. Let's see. So right underneath the neck is where I'm going to put this one. All right, and then I'm going to do this little section right here of this jacket. And 
and it kind of goes all the way down into there. Right, and I'm actually going to take it around to this other area. Now, because I did decide to use um, to pick chooser bigger areas, then I can actually switch out from that number two brush and then move to my number 10 just to kind of speed things up a little bit. I'm gonna get a little bit bigger of a brush. And even though this section in here is also connected, I'm actually gonna stop right there because I don't want my jacket to be just mostly one shade of blue. I want several different shades. So I'm gonna go down to my other side. And what I decided to choose, and the reason why I choose these locations of the jacket is because they're more of the outside portions of the jacket versus the inside. So usually those would be a little darker even if light is hitting them. All right, and I'm going to go right up in here and come back down. All right, so I'm gonna leave that, and then I'm actually going to do a little bit of this section over in here. So I'm going to kind of mark that section off and then paint it in. And as you can see, I am painting all the way to the edge of my uh, paper or my board or my surface. And, um, and that's just so that it's completed. Even though the drawing didn't go all the way over, I am going to take my paint all the way over. Okay, so that is my first section of the darker blue. And actually, you know what, I'm going to go ahead and do the eyebrows as well. So let's go ahead and eyebrows in. All right, so there's one. Let's do the other. All right. So, <clears throat> excuse me. So now we have our uh, our next shade of blue that we chose to pick, and we can go ahead and start moving to different areas. But actually, you know what? I decided I'm also going to pick these little spots here on the ears as well, just so we have some of these little shades of blue going to other areas. And then I'm also going to add them here. And these two little spots by the mouth. Because they would be like little creases on both sides of his mouth. All right, so now, like I said, I cleaned off my palette knife after the first time I, did, I used the mixing. And I'm going to scrape up a little more of the white so that we can have another shade of white. So once again, I'm gonna to try to take this about the same amount of white and I am going to put it on my canvas, or I'm not sorry, not my canvas, my palette. And then I am gonna scoop up half of the blue that I just used 
and mix that in with the white that I'm now putting on my palette. Or what you could do is you could just take a corner of the paint that you've already mixed. So here, I'm going to show you. So I'm just going to take the, the white that I did and put it right here on the corner of this and then kind of mix in that corner of where I just used my other blue. So I'm not taking away all of my blue. I'm still leaving some of it. I just want to take like a little bit of it. And I added the white right there on that corner. So as you can see now, I have like three different shades of blue. So I have my darker blue. That's my second shade of blue. And then there's my third shade. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to pick a couple more spots on the jacket and maybe a few spots on the face and start adding those blues. So I'm going to somewhat focus a little bit more on the jacket with this shade than I am with the face. So I'm taking my number 10 brush because I'm painting in such a large area. So let's get that large area painted in. And like I said, I'm doing the number 10 brush because of the fact that it is such a large area and I want to go ahead and fill as much in as I can. All right, and now let's see. I think this one really big area here is actually enough for that section. All right, so what I'm going to do next is I'm going to take my two inch brush, I mean, my number two brush, and I'm going to pick a couple of different spots on the inside of the face to paint in. So I going to go with like the mustache area here and I know that I'm going over a couple spots of my darker spots which is okay because what I can do is because that's the also the reason why I left some of the darker paints and stuff on the palette is so that if I want to go back a little later and add in a couple of darker shades later, I can. All right. And the next thing I'm going to do is a forehead. I'm going to actually move this a little closer to me. But the next thing I'm going to do is the forehead area right in here. So it's a little bit lighter than the hair, but not much. So I'm going to go ahead and fill in this section of the forehead. Okay, so let's see. And because my background is already dry, it's okay for me to kind of rest my arm right there on that side so that I can have a little more control over my brush, especially in these nice in smaller areas. So 
Okay, so now I've done the forehead and I'm going to pick another spot on his face to kind of put that color. And I believe what I'm going to do is I'm going to go with this nose area right here. And do a little bit darker in here. And I'm going to take it to this side. Because what I'm going to do is later on, once uh, I've somewhat finished, these lines right here on the side of the nose, I'm going to go back over with my darker blue so that I can make them a little more prominent. I don't want to do them right now because, as you can see, I'm kind of still painting over them. It's much easier to paint over them with the lighter color and then take the darker color and then make that line on top. Okay, and then I'm going to paint the inside of the ears. So both spots right here on the inside of the ears. I'm going to go ahead and paint those as well. And then the last section that I'm going to paint with this color here is going to be the uh, lips. So not the little organic shape part of the lips, but the lips themselves that are a little bit thicker. And I'm going to still leave those little organic shapes that are inside the lips where they are. And I'm going to fill them in later with something a little lighter. And then once again, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back with my darker blue. And where you guys can kind of see how the lips are outlined in these darker lines. I'm going to come back later and do those again with that darker blue. once it's time to, you know, start cleaning things up a little bit. All right, now lastly what I'm gonna do is like his eyelid areas. So the top part of the eyelid. And if you go outside the line, it's absolutely okay. As you can see, I just did it. But now this is where my flat number two brush comes in handy. So the flat brush, if you take it and lay it on its side, it's a little easier to control than that round brush. So what I'm doing is I'm just turning it to its side and then kind of using it to kind of make straighter edges. And I'm also going to do this line right here underneath the eyes. All right, and I believe that is all that we're actually going to do with um, with that shade of blue. All right, so the next step, of course, is to add more white. And like I said, each time I'm going to clean off my palette knife. But if you just have like the squeeze bottle of white, then you can just squeeze some white on. Um, and you won't actually need the palette knife as much. Uh, mine's is mainly because I have to scoop my white out. So once again, just going to take the white and I'm going to add it to a section of my other blue. And now you should have like a, a really decent light color um, blue. It should be much lighter than the blue you started off with. And like I said, what we're doing is we're adding a shade of white to about like half of whatever blue you just made. 
All right, so now you should be able to see about four different blues. That's our darkest. That's the second one we use, our third, and now we're on our fourth color blue here. All right. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to be using this shade of blue. Actually, uh, a good amount of it is going to be going and covering up the majority of his face. So I actually believe that I'm going to be using the, um, the larger brush first. And then I'll go back through it and I'll start using some of the smaller brushes so that I can get some of those tighter spaces. All right, so just give me one second and I'll go ahead and get started with that. And like I said, now you should have like a, a good amount of white, I guess, added to your blue. And this blue should be um, noticeably a little more lighter than uh than the other blues so i'm just going to take this blue and kind of outline his jaw first and i'm doing this with my larger brush this is my number 10 brush. And if you want more control over your brush, then of course use a smaller brush. And let's see, I'm gonna go ahead and, and switch off. And what I'm actually gonna use is gonna be my number two flat brush so that I can get right up against these lines a little easier than I can with my round brush. So I have just a little bit more control with my flat brush than with the round. So I can get right up to those nooks and crannies a little bit easier. I'm using the flat. Especially because majority of the uh, face is this shade. So I want to be able to make it look nice and neat and not messy. And as you guys can see, I'm going over a little bit um, with these with this lighter color. It's going or somewhat running over a little bit of of the other paints that I've already added on, which is okay because what you can do is um, is just clean it up once you're finished. So once you've gotten majority of your paint on your canvas. What you're going to want to do is just go back and kind of clean things up, make lines a little smoother so that you have a more complete finished look. But right now we're just kind of just painting things in. We want to get all of our paint where it needs to be and each of our colors where they need to be at. And then we'll worry about making them look good. All right, so now I'm going to also get the ears. So I'm going to go around and get the ears. So I want to make sure that they're painted in as well. Like I said, because this is the color that we're using most of, a lot of these have a lot of nooks and crannies that we kind of got to get in between.
So I'm going as far in as I possibly can. And I'm trying to get right over top or get right to the edge of these and kind of because what I kind of want to do is cover up those lines that we drew earlier. So I'm trying to get really close up to it so that we can cover up those lines. Alright, so let's see. So we should have majority of the face now covered. And then um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back. And now I'm going to pick a couple spots on his jacket to fill in. Now majority of the spots by now we're going to actually be filling in. Because we don't want that much white on his jacket. And then of course if you feel like you have too many spots that are going to be too light, you can go back and maybe pick one of your other colors or your previous colors that you didn't use a lot of and then fill in the jacket with those colors instead. Um, you know, it's always going to be a preference. Basically what you like or what you think looks good. Um, that's when you start making your artistic decisions. And you pick where or what you want to use and where you want to put it. All right, so let's see. So we're just about done. I'm going to pick a couple more spots around the tie that I want to be a little, that I want to also include. And then actually I'm going to fill in both of those little spots there with the blue. And then maybe this little flap here. Then this one here. All right, so I picked those two flaps there to kind of fill in also with that lighter color blue. Now, um, I'm going to go ahead and mix my uh, my blue once again with white. And of course, by this time, um, once we mix in some more white, our blue should be practically white almost. All right, so once again, I'm just scraping about half of that or so. And then just adding the white right next to where our other blue is. And as you can see now, it's not much blue left in there. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to fill in all these empty gaps with our last shade of blue. Alright, once again, I'm still using my number two flat brush because this has a lot of little organic shapes and bends and I want to make sure that, um, that I get in quite a bit of light. 
light shades here. And I want to make sure that everything is pretty close in where it needs to be. So I want to use my flat brush for that. So I can get as close to those shapes as I possibly can. I mean, and if the if you don't feel like the blue is light enough for you, you can always um, also just use white itself. Uh, it will give you that same effect. It would just be a little more of a vibrant white, obviously, because you're just using white. So if you feel like it's not light enough for you and you want it to be even lighter, then just use plain old white to fill in these last little spots. You know, once again, you can make your own artistic decisions and, you know, make this project your own. So anyway, when I used to always do, like, a lot of the, the tutorials and things where you got to follow along, um, I would never do exactly the way the instructor was telling us to do it. I would always have to put my own spin on things and make things my own. You know, because sometimes we can we can take a design that someone else made, which is really nice and it's really cool, and then we add our own spin to it and it becomes something new. And of course it's something ours, so it's even better. All right, so we are almost finished with the face. All right, so right now you should be getting a pretty decent image of Martin Luther King Jr. I know that kind of when it starts off, it just looks like a, a bunch of blobs, I guess, of lines with a face in the middle of it. But now that you're starting to really get in there and get the hang of it, it's really cool. And you're starting to see Martin Luther King Jr. in here. And you know what? And this is fun. All right, so let's see. So we have like a couple of little dots here by the eyes. And I'm just going to take the tip of my brush and kind of pat those little dots in. I'm going to add a little bit more of the lighter color in here. Okay, now let's move down to the jacket. So we can kind of finish off his jacket. Well, I guess what's left is the shirt and tie now. And we're just gonna fill those spots in. All right, so we are almost 
finish. So once we finish putting these little um, light colors in, the only thing we have left is just to add a couple of our own unique finishing touches, uh, go around things, maybe clean a couple spots up. But for the most part, your image is now complete. So, like I said um, at the beginning, the other thing that we could do, actually, you know what, I'm sorry. So what we're going to do is we're going to put little dots in his eyes. And I'm just going to take the back of my paintbrush, dip it in that light blue, and then I'm going to put a dot in the center of both of his pupils. And then I'm going to take and do another dot, but I'm going to use the side of the brush a little bit. So this way, this dot isn't as big. So just the side. And once you put those little dots in the eyes, that kind of gives it just a little bit more life. Kind of brings it, gives it a little bit of a pop. So, um, like I was saying though, uh, what we're going to do now is I'm going to go back and I'm going to clean up a couple of my little edges and different spots and things. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with my darkest blue and um, I'm going to use my number two brush and I'm going to turn it to its side so that I can start cleaning up around the mouth area and adding in those darker blues right over top of where they kind of <clears throat> just the clean up the edges make it feel just a little bit more complete all right and then like right along this eye I have a couple little spotty blotches and then this one as well and then over top of my eyes as well I'm going to clean up those little areas as you can see on this eye, I almost completely covered up the whole dark blue section. So now that we're doing this, you can kind of see it come back to life a little bit more. And I'm going to do like a little line in here. And I'm just barely touching it here just to kind of give it just a little bit of a darkness underneath the eye. But I don't want a complete line. So I'm kind of just touching my paintbrush down. So it still gives it that line, but it's not a complete line there. And then I want to do the same thing just above the eye here. I just want to kind of give a little bit of a darker, I guess like a darkness feel. And I'm just touching, but not actually putting it all the way down. So I can kind of see some of those lines and things that we kind of went over and it just makes it a little look a little bit better, gives it a little bit more of a pop. And I'm going to do the same thing around both sides of his nose. And like I said, what I'm doing, instead of kind of trying to paint the line, I am just taking my brush and just dabbing it down. <clears throat> 